Hello again everyone. In this video we're going to talk about an important concept that you're going to have to understand when working with an Oracle database. and That's called the concept of locking. Oracle locks information based on the transactions that go through inside your system. So it's possible to make changes inside your database and before you commit those transactions the transactions will be locked. It'll stop anyone else from um, updating or making any kind of modifications to the rows affected uh, by the transaction that you're working in. And we're going to walk through an example of that here in this video. There's a lot of really sophisticated things that you can do with locking. Uh, there's different types of locks. Uh, there's ways of monitoring the locking that's going on in your system. There's ways of programming your applications so that they minimize any type of locking. We're going to take a look at those in some other videos. Uh, we're going to have uh, videos on an intermediate locking and advanced locking techniques. This is obviously a beginner video, so we're just going to walk through some of the basic things that go along with locking here. So if you've been watching my other videos, you know that I've been working with this hr.music table uh, inside my database. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to change all of the records in this particular table. And I'm going to update a real simple statement. I'm going to change the rating for everything in this particular table uh, to have a rating of 5. So it's a real simple statement, right? I just say something like update hr.music set rating equal to 5. And since I don't have a WHERE clause on this statement, it's going to update everything in the HR music table. So if I execute that guy, it says 10 rows updated. If I go back and I query the information, I see that the rating is set to 5 for all the rows in, that, in this table. I haven't committed this transaction yet, so Oracle has locked all of these records. It's basically allocated them and said, hey, someone is working with these records uh, until they go through and commit the transaction or roll back the transaction. I'm not going to allow anybody else to go in here and make changes to these records. And we can show that by going into a different session here. So I'm going to go into SQL Plus as the system user. And if I query that table, you can see that I see the before values for rating. They don't all say 5. I haven't committed the transaction yet. So in the session that I'm working with, if I query the table, I see the updated information. But every other session sees a read consistent view of the data, which means um, the, the value before I've committed the transaction. So if I go through this now and I try to update, this particular table, it's not Oracle's not going to let me do it because this other session here, my SQL developer session, is locking those records. So if I go through and I try to say update HR music set, and uh, I can pick uh, one of the rows, I can update, try to update all the rows. Any type of modification I'm going to try to make to this, Oracle isn't going to let me do it. So in this case, I'm just going to pick one of the rows there. I'm going to set rating equal to 2, where, uh, let's see, artist f name is equal to L-O-U. So Oracle just sits there. It's not doing anything. It doesn't say one row updated. It's just kind of in no man's land. And why we're in no man's land right now is because this other uh, session has that row locked, and I can't really do anything with it. So it's just going to sit here until I release those records. This can be a real big problem if you're working with applications. Somebody goes into an application, they make a modification to a whole bunch of rows, and then they leave for the day, or they go to lunch, or they go to you know some three-hour meeting. The rows in the database are going to be locked until that user comes back and either commits the transaction or rolls back the transaction. So this could be a problem on your system if your applications aren't coded properly. I'm going to go back to SQL Developer now, go back to uh, my uh, worksheet here, and I'm going to roll back this transaction. And I'm going to try to get both of these on the screen at the same time. So. All right, so you can see there's my DOS session below that. Here's my uh, update session inside my SQL developer environment. As soon as I hit either commit or rollback, it'll free up, it'll release the locks on those rows and allow the other session to commence. 
So I'm going to go through here, and as soon as I click rollback, you can see immediately the other session released what it was doing. It released the locks on the rows in that table, and the other session was able to go through and say update music set uh, reading to two. It was able to update that row. Same thing now with this session. This session has that row locked. So if I try to do this again, where I want to update music set uh, uh, rating equal to five, and I try to execute that command, it just kind of stays there, right? Again, it's a no man's land. It's just it can't do anything. Why? Because this other session has this row locked, so it can't really do anything. So let me go back in here, and again, just to show you how instantaneously this happens, I'm going to type rollback, and as soon as I hit the return key here, this window is going to free up. So you can see, it freed up immediately, and now it's up to, uh, able to update the session, uh, update the, the rows uh, for this particular session. I'm going to roll back that because I don't want to change any of the data. Go back into music, requery everything. Let's get this centered a little bit. Requery these guys. And I have all my previous values back. So locking is a really important thing to understand inside your database. And you want to make sure that your applications are set up so that you're not locking rows uh, where you don't want to. Obviously, there's going to be some situations where it's entirely appropriate to lock information as you're updating information uh, inside your database. You don't want multiple people having the ability to go in there and make multiple changes to the same set of data, which could lead to an inconsistent data set inside your database. You obviously don't want that. But at the same time, it's really important to understand all the different things that go along with locking. And in the intermediate and advanced videos, we're going to take a look at monitoring locking, the different types of locks that are out there, and how to prevent locking inside your applications.